G'day, mate. Welcome to Capital Industry with me, Jilly. Today, I want to cover the freshest information we have for update one and any other updates since I last played six months ago. So, can I ask to borrow a like? Not for my sake, but for your fellow captains out there. They might not know that update one is right around the corner, and your like on this video might be the like needed for the algorithm to reach out to them. In the last six months, the two devs haven't been quiet. In fact, they've hired another dev and they've also added a bunch of features. So let's talk about those first. Starting with those that affect the early game, we have auto placing connectors between buildings, a revamped tutorial interface. Oh, and I can't forget bricks. Yep, bricks are now an option rather than the player rushing directly into concrete production. I also can't forget the beacon lighthouse. It now provides refugees infinitely with diminishing returns, of course, but it means when you send your ship out exploring, no longer will you have random people showing up expecting houses to live in. There's also been a selection of other small quality life changes, which I'm not going to read out. Instead, you can pause if needed. But I do want to mention they also changed the statue maintenance. It now provides a 4% reduction for the first statue, 2% for the second, with 1%, half percent, so on and so forth, depending on how many you wish to build. I think one either side of the port seems like a great idea, don't you? Also, we now flip buildings that have a mechanical shaft, which is going to make power plants so much neater. And I can't forget the biggest update, that being the new map, Insula Mortis, or Island of Death. Along with a few other quality of life changes, that being the upgrade planner, so no more hunting for that one belt segment, that's one tile long, holding up production. Along with blueprints are now part of the game. So yes, that means I will be sharing blueprints in the near future. Join my Discord if you want to get your hands on them early, and also leave some feedback. To go with the addition of blueprints, finally transport pillars were fixed, so you can click and place them anywhere you want, not where the game thinks they should be. Which is great improvement for those of us who enjoy an island with as much automated transport as possible, uh, but still want to make sure the trucks have access, you know, just in case. Oh, and buried pipes are now finally fixed for the fourth time. Yeah, so you should be able to bury your pipe anywhere you want. That's not all. The devs continue to work on optimizations, increasing the performance of the game whilst working their way towards update one with more level of detail optimizations everywhere, which I guess brings us to update one and the continued improvements with terrain and optimizations. I think we should start with optimizations first as that's what brought my last series to an end. Firstly, the train now has level detailed modeling as well. Uh, their test showed a nine times increase in rendering times, along with only needing a quarter as much memory, which means that they have used these extra resources to up the level of detail in the game. From triplanar texture mapping, to adding new props and decorations, to even adding brand new textures to rocks and ores, not to mention the four new flowers they've added for your trucks to drive over. But that's not all, of course. The factory also got an update with the use of a whole new rendering pipeline, along with the real workhorses, the trucks got a facelift as well. Oh, and they now have both headlights and taillights, which is great, because the weather also got an update. The sea dynamically changes for different weather conditions, uh, but also the island can have a dark layer of fog during heavy rain stops. I'm so glad we have those little taillights now. I think this brings us to the map editor and the changes around the terrain under the surface. As I covered before in my last video, uh, the map editor didn't make it into update one. But the devs have gone through and brought all the old maps up to date with small changes along with a more natural feel to the islands. Also, a lot of materials have had changes as well, specifically how loose material falls. Previously, everything took on the properties of whatever was on top. So if a truck dumped sand from the top of a mountain, you could and did create a landslide. This could easily be seen when digging in a pristine mountain face, the first excavator would often end up on top of a little pile of stone and have to dig his way out. Uh, that has all now changed, so rock behaves more like rock and sand will just flow over it and cascade to the bottom. Which added a problem that extremely fluid materials like sand and trash would all just pile up the bottom. So once again, they added a bit of stickiness to the cliffs, so at least some of your trash gets stuck on the way down, which I think is a nice touch. Speaking of which, dumping materials, rather than falling in four directions, they now shift in eight directions. So your dirt piles are going to seem more curved than ever before, which is great as that brings us to some of the new buildings. First off, the stacker. We've already seen that. It's primary uses to either stockpile material for later or fill in the mines with trash once they're complete. Or you could run your trash into a new incinerator plant. It's a much upgraded addition to the old burner and the best part of this is we can make power out of our trash. It's not the only building that got an upgrade. We have the diesel generator Mark II, which is more space efficient than the little one we start with. It also has the addition of being slightly more fuel efficient than its smaller counterpart, 
and you can now filter the exhaust. Also, the mixer had a facelift with a Mark II version being added in the game as well, as it was sorely needed. Along with the Crusher Mark II, this big boy replaces six of the old crushes, and it's so large, it's half down underground. The last building got a facelift and upgrade as well was the Electrolyzer. It no longer looked like it fell right out of a science fiction game, but now actually looks like an industrial building, which is great as it also got a Mark II version. We also have a selection of new buildings added to the mix. We have the Crusher, which will compact recyclables along with trash for easier transport but once compacted we need to uncompact them which leads us to the shredder which will also deal with nuclear waste we'll come back to that later when we talk about nuclear and the power overhaul yeah the last building got an update was of course the captain's office it seemed a bit much that you people continued to follow you when they were living in ship containers yet you had the grand captain's office so now we have a much simpler captain's office mark one which unlocks blueprints level one edicts as well as a passive boost for quick trades to get you out of trouble uh, then you can then upgrade it to level two once you have the need to I did mention underground pipes previously. Well, the good news is they didn't just stop there. We now have vertical pipes, which will hopefully make everybody's refineries look much better. Belts and storage also got an update. Storage now have an icon on top to tell you what they are storing, as well as little item stacks on the side to reflect how full they are. A nice addition, uh, but with every gift comes a compromise, so the devs are now nerfing the speed at which to transfer first items from storage to storage. So no more chain storage races across the map. If you want to see that video, the link's up the top right-hand corner. Also, be down in the description and in the big comments. Also, storages, much like belts, will consume power when items are transferred in and out. The good news is that is now a game difficulty option. Now, you might be worried about power consumption, and I am too, but the update has big changes for that too. Firstly, every generator makes four times the power it used to, but every building also consumes four times the power it used to. Now, you might ask, why do the devs make this change? Well, the answer is they updated the belts and only use two times the power. So overall, belts now use less power, which is a great change in my book even if the storage now uses a tiny bit of power as well. But that's not all. They also changed the ratio of high pressure turbines to low, it's now one to one ratio. Should make everybody's life a little bit easier. Steam is now 50% more energy dense than it was before, so expect to use a bit more fuel to make steam. Power storage was also a highly requested feature, and although steam storage pipes worked, they were not the best system. So we now have the molten salt storage, which can pump steam directly in and store the heat for later use. Swapping the solar power, could cause issues in the past as your power fluctuated a lot between a sunny day and not. So surplus consumers and producers were also added to the game as well. So now you can turn on some production lines like steam storage only when you have surplus power available. To use some of that surplus power, they also added the super pressure turbine. You can get super pressure steam from an electric boiler or from a nuclear power plant, which also had an overhaul. The reactor model got an overhaul and because the power change is 50% extra from steam density and a four times increase in power, it's now gonna do 90 megawatts of power per reactor. But waste was always a problem, but no longer in update one. Ah, now we have the Mark II reactor and even a Mark III. The Mark II reactor is the MOX reactor, which burns regular fuel or MOX fuel for 33% extra power, now being 120 megawatts. It also comes with power regulation, so it can dynamically scale up and down according to your island's needs. How do you get MOX fuel, you may ask? Well, it comes from uranium and plutonium, which is harvested from spent fuel in the nuclear reprocessing plant finally a way to deal with a thousand years of nuclear waste. But reprocessing spent fuel for MOX fuel gives a fusion product which can go into fuel storage and breaks down after 120 years, which is 24 hours of real time, or 12 hours at two times speed, or eight hours at max speed, at which they can go into the shredder and then get scrapped in recyclables. Spent MOX fuel is still a problem, will still have to be stored till later. That is unless there was a Reactor Mark III. The Reactor Mark III, also known as the fast breeding reactor, is your answer to all your nuclear waste problems. It produces 240 megawatts worth of power and provides super pressure steam as well, burning both nuclear waste and MOX waste. But burning the waste is not gonna be as simple as just throwing in. You need to run it through the nuclear reprocessing plant. Now, it took me a while, but I worked out the key. We have the green with a gray circle is the reprocessed uranium. The green equals, the green waste is plutonium. The blue waste is the fusion product, which, like I said, can be scrapped after 120 years. The spent MOX fuel is orange, which, um, yeah, that's going to stay in storage for a little while, like forever. 
Uh, the gray with the red circle is core fuel. The gray with the brown circle is the spent core fuel. And the blue with the gray circle is the blanket fuel, which all come down to the reactor Mark III, the fast breeding reactor. It's a complicated production chain. So complicated, it's actually after the rocket and the tech tree. Yeah, that's the full tech tree. It also requires you not only make the reactor core fuel, but also blanket fuel and then clean and recycle both ingredients for more power. The recipe chain goes something like this. I do also need to mention that we now have depleted uranium, which can be used as part of the fast burning reactor. All you could do as I will be doing and dumping the C. So all the new housing states are guaranteed to be pest free going forward. Bonus is we'll be saving on the lighting bill as we no longer need street lights at night. A hydrogen reformer has been added, which makes use of super pressure steam and gives a much better ratio for hydrogen electrolysis. Don't worry, you can also get super pressure steam from an electric boiler if you don't want to mess with the more complex nuclear reactor chains. Speaking of production chains, there's been a number of updates as well. Sand now comes from crushing quartz instead of rock, or dug up from around the island. It also means that the world map quartz mine no longer requires electronics too to unlock and now has unlimited supply. Gold ore was nerfed, but the good news is I saved a lot from my last run. Now you get half the yield and has increased crushing costs, so check your ratios when building gold this time around. Previously, maintenance three required microchips, which required computing, which required maintenance three. So the biggest change to ease players into this was the addition of the mainframe computer. It doesn't require microchips to provide computing power, but due to the vacuum tube na nature of the mainframe, it requires a lot more power to run this stepping stone. Robotic assemblers were also expensive on maintenance, which was the intention. The issue was that they were also the only way to make some recipes, so several changes have been made to balance this out. The first change being Electronics 2 were made cheaper by needing less Electronics 1, which in turn makes Electronics 3 cheaper to make. Also, data servers now have double the server density, but the same overall maintenance cost. So all the servers have been upgraded from 3090s to now 4090s. All these changes mean the top end of the tech tree has had a complete reshuffle, with construction parts 4, solar, and the statue of maintenance are all now much lower in the tech tree. D cell has had its cost reduced by 15%, and it now has double the throughput, which I'm very happy to see. Contracts had a complete overhaul as well, as much of the game was tweaked and touched. Recycling plant also has had a minor change. Rather than five outputs for four different recycled items, they now all put on a single belt, and we finally have a use for sorters. Also, the recycling plant has now two flat belts to feed in compacted recycling. Finally, we have a good selection of quality of life changes as well. We're going to do this quick fire style as the devs seem to have gone down my wish list of updates. First, leveling. No longer do we have to dig the side of a mountain to then come back and fill in the potholes. It's all done in one step. I wonder between this and the stacker if we'll ever see a bulldozer to just push material around. Uh, one click vehicle upgrading for all our truckies. Uh, blueprint improvements. Blueprints now auto downgrade to whatever tech you have unlocked at the time. New dashboards for more data, electricity, maintenance, and workers all have their own dashboards now. Also, vehicle job scheduling. Changes have been made to how vehicles are scheduled. Now, with the new optimized system, jobs are assigned much faster and are always assigned to whichever truck is closest and idle. Not to mention, with all the changes to how items are stored on belts, now trucks no longer drive around with a container on the back, is now open and shows what the truck is carrying. Did you ever think it was weird that the excavator can only dig out iron with its giant T3 bucket? So the devs. So now mixed cargo is a thing. Now when your excavator is digging, you can be confident he's going to pick up a full bucket, not just one piece of sand. Which now means we also have mixed cargo for the trucks as well. The truck drivers just got an upgrade to make sure they dump the correct materials into the correct loose storage. We might have an ore sorting building in the future, but maybe a mod will also add it. Finally, they've added another 30 minutes worth of music to the Ori Extensive playlist, which you've actually been listening to during this video. So with all that coming in update one, which is due in less than a week on May 30th, what are you most excited for? And what do you wish they had added for update one? Lastly, I ask you to please check the community tab as I'll be posting a poll on which map I should try for my next Let's Play. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because with the new Let's Play series, I'll also be releasing tutorial videos along with blueprints as update one hits. What blueprint do you want to see shared first? Sound off in the comments below. Now, with all that said and done, as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the 30th with update number one. All right, bye.